Hello, I'm Tony Johnston and welcome to Bully Free in the Workplace. Over the next hour and a half, psychologist and author of Bully Blocking at Work, Evelyn Field, will cover the key workplace bullying issues and outline proven strategies to help you deal with them. We advise watching the program in its entirety first and then focusing on the segments of most relevance to your situation. As always, seek professional psychological, legal or careers advice for any areas of particular concern. Evelyn Field, welcome to the program. Can we start with a definition of what workplace bullying actually is? Workplace bullying is really about an abuse of power. It can happen to nearly anyone in an organisation, whether it's an apprentice, a board member, a surgeon, a lawyer, a secretary, a teacher, a nurse. And it can come from one person or it can come from a whole mob. And it can happen to one person or a number of people can be bullied. The important thing is that it causes humiliation, offence and distress. It creates a very toxic working environment and everybody is affected by that. So the target, the onlookers, the bully and of course performance and productivity. The effects are far reaching. Can you give us some examples of workplace bullying? Well. We, we have it very similar to in the schoolyard, so we've got the physical bullying, which is not as common in the workplace, though it is increasing, unfortunately, in terms of violent acts being done as a result of feeling bullied and harassed and stressed at work. And we're seeing a lot of that in the United States. But the more common ones are the verbal bullying, you know, you're an idiot, you don't know what you're doing, um, the exclusion, not uh, having access to your emails or not knowing about meetings, cyberbullying, those horrible text messages, malicious rumours, um, what I would call uh, a week weekend scud, you know, suddenly being told that you've got to turn up on Saturday when it's not your date, uh, not being given the same shifts as everybody else, knowing that some people get away with doing less while you've got to do more. So there are a variety of behaviours, but they're all designed to humiliate and demean. What are the prevalence rates of workplace bullying like here in Australia? It's very hard to be uh, completely accurate, but what it seems to uh, show is that it's at least 15% of people are bullied, but it could be 25%, it could be 50% 50, uh, 50%, it could be 70 or 80% in some careers. In, in which industries and which careers is it likely to be 50%, 70%? I, these are, these are, are huge numbers, aren't they? According to our research and international research, it's more likely to happen to people in the health, welfare and education sectors. Pe uh, people in universities, social workers, psychologists, welfare officers, nurses, doctors, people working in a hierarchical organisation like the army, the police, ambulance. Uh, we know it happens to apprentices and of course it happens in many other industries. now. Perhaps the rate of reporting is not as high, perhaps it doesn't happen, but we are looking at many people going to work every day, fearing what will happen to them. Are there gender or age differences when it comes to a target, someone who is being bullied? Uh, we think that probably more women are bullied. Uh, we know that more men do the bullying, basically because more men are managers. Uh, in terms of age, I think a lot of older people are going to be bullied because obviously they have higher salaries and it might pay the organisation to bully them out rather than to make them redundant. Unfortunately, younger people can be bullied because they're enthusiastic, they're trying to do their hardest and they can be taken advantage of. And another group that I'm coming across more recently is those people who've decided to go into another career. So they've had years of experience, let's say, as a financial advisor, and then they go into something like nursing. Suddenly they're being bullied out. In fact, there's a, uh, a case in the age uh, the other day of a woman who was working in human resources and then studied law. And she's worked for two years in a very well-known legal firm and is now suing for bullying. And she's aged 50. Why is that? Is, is it because they're new, they're, they're a different person in, in the workplace and perhaps an easier target? Uh, 
I think when you're new, you can be an easier target. I think they come with a set of experiences that doesn't uh, parallel their experience in that industry, and that may create some difficulties. How is workplace bullying distinct from something like teasing or harassment? Well, I think they're all part of the same thing. So a little bit of bantering happens everywhere. But when it becomes more hurtful, then it creates injury. Harassment could be gender, racial, religious. Um, it's really about abusing power. And people who feel good about their race, their culture, their religion, will know how to deflect it or give a good retort. People who are unsure about their culture, their religion, become threatened by it. And that's when the bullying increases. But we can call it lots of different names. So harassment, bullying, mobbing, bastardization, violence, it's all the same thing. We've heard more recently a lot about uh, school bullying. How do the prevalence rates of school bullying, which can be one in four or five or six students on a weekly basis, compare with uh, the workplace? More or less in the workplace, would you say? Um, we t I find that the rates in the workplace are higher because we're starting off with one in six, but there are studies showing that it's one in two. Um, one study about teachers said 97% of teachers who completed the survey, this is in New South Wales, mm. experienced bullying at work. I think a nurse study said over 80% had experienced some sort of bullying. So these are much, much higher. We can't imagine a child going to school and thinking that one in two children are going to be bullied. That certainly does not happen in the school ground. Is this something that can carry over from childhood? For example, someone who was a bully at school, do they have a greater potential to be a bully in the workplace? And indeed, someone who was a target, a victim of bullying at school, do they have a, a greater potential to be a target in the workplace? As far as I know, the research is very sketchy on that. So I remember my school bully, I think she's still a, a bully many, many years later, though of course I haven't seen her in the work workplace. Um, but I do know, and I do know that some people who are bullied at school will be bullied at work, but it is not the general rule. Most people I see were not bullied at school, were not bullied for many years in the workplace, but are suddenly being bullied with an inappropriate management. But what we do know from some studies is that kids who were reactive or the uh, provocative target, they become provocative in the workplace. So that doesn't seem to be a very good trait to carry through. And sometimes you read of people who are being victimised at school who become bullies at work. So it's really hard to know, but it is not the same. You talked about prevalence rates being anything from 15 through to 80. In some industries, yes. up to 98% the surveys had demonstrated that yes. people had been bullied in the workplace. How often is this happening? People going to work, is this on a daily basis? Is this on a weekly or, or monthly basis? Very, very hard to know. I would imagine at least weekly, um, sometimes monthly. I had one client who was yelled at publicly in a meeting by her lawyer, employer, and it only happened four times, but that was enough to totally devastate her. We can think of other situations where someone might be um, yelled at just a few times and not allowed to have a computer that works. So in terms of incidences, it's not very often, but the impact uh, occurs. On the other hand, most people I see who've been bullied could give you pages and pages of incidences. So normally what we're looking at is bullying occurring over at least six months. Sometimes for one and a half years, sometimes much, much longer. So in our first segment, a definition of what workplace bullying is. Coming up next, we'll have a look at the different types of bullies. That's next. <laughs> 